do give us an, a, a briefing and can I request colleagues to uh, in the media to start uh, typing their questions. And again, of course, uh, colleagues, I will request you to restrict your questions to the matter at hand, which is the state of the system and load shedding. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you again for joining us as we give you this update on the latest state of play with regard to ESCOM generation and the implementation of load shedding. Our plan maintenance, we've got 5,172 megawatts out on plan maintenance, so we are staying the course on significant plan maintenance as we have committed to do. Our unplanned losses, full losses, are still uh, too high at 9,907, uh, although I do see that Majubo Unit 3 has just been synchronized to the grid literally as we speak. Uh, our partial load losses are coming down, so that's quite pleasing, at uh, 4,396. So the total unplanned losses are sitting at 14,303. You may recall that we were uh, sitting way in excess of 16,000 megawatts of unplanned losses earlier in the week. Uh, so the system is uh, recovering. We are seeing some of the big units coming back as planned. Demand forecast for this evening is a shade over 30,000 megawatts, 30,011 megawatts. Our available capacity is uh, at 28,022, which therefore explains why we, uh, why we have to maintain uh, load shedding stage three until after evening peak tonight. We intend uh, to drop it then to stage two. Uh, and then by uh, after evening peak on Friday evening, we will be um, hopefully in a position to uh, lift load shedding in its entirety for the weekend, depending on how the system performs. Uh, our reserves are in uh, quite good shape now. Uh, we have uh, 26 pump hours at Drakensberg. Ingula is pretty much full, as is Palmit. Ankerlig diesel levels uh, looking very healthy at 85%. Hariqua, uh, where we've been running diesel extensively, is sitting at 65 But we uh, think that that is quite a manageable situation, so nothing to be concerned about there. We did lose uh, Groot Flight 2, which is a very small unit, uh, at uh, just before 11 yesterday morning due to a boiler tube leak. Um, but we saw Arnott 2 and 6 come back, as well as Kindle 3, um, Matimba 5, and now also uh, Majuba 3 has been synchronized to the grid. There uh, is a loss of 270 megawatts uh, due to maintenance done on the line from Kohora Basa. Uh, this is a uh, this maintenance is being conducted in Mozambique by our partners on that line, uh, EDM. So we are doing everything that we can to assist them in order to complete that maintenance. Um, that's quite important. Uh, we unfortunately did lose um, the Tuka 6 uh, this morning, just after 8, due to a submerged scraper chain that uh, got stuck. This chain clears the ash at the bottom of the boiler and when we cannot clear the ash obviously we have challenges running the boiler so uh, that unit uh, has tripped uh, and once that has been repaired we look forward to that unit coming back. Uh, that leads to a loss of about 365 megawatts. Um, Majuba, as I said, Unit 3 uh, came back uh, quite a bit earlier than planned, so that is quite pleasing and uh, will continue to return units to service over the next two days uh, so that we will be in a position, if all goes well, uh, given all of the risks that we can then uh, lift load shedding by the weekend. Thank you, Sikonati. That is the brief overview of where we are. Uh, unless Rulani has anything further to add, 
uh, I think I've given quite a comprehensive overview, but if he has anything further to add, then uh, we can go to uh, Q&A. Thank you, Andre. Uh, Rulani, do you want a minute to add anything to this update? Sikonati, thanks. Um, maybe over and above that, I need to indicate that uh, with all the hard work that uh, the team has put uh, to this morning, I can report that uh, uh, seven of our power plants are running without a uh, forced outage. And that is your Camden, Matimba, Midupi, Litavo, Kendall, Komati, and Quebec. Uh, the only units that are offered that at those st at any of those stations are planned. So that, that I think it's uh, something that we shows that uh, we are recovering. And uh, in terms of our units at risk, uh, as I indicated yesterday, we have seen further reduction in terms of the amount of megawatt at risk. This morning sitting at around 7,400 uh, megawatts that are at risk. Uh, obviously, we still need to deal with the issues of the forecasted rain uh, over this coming weekend. Uh, the team at uh, different power plants have mobilized to make sure that we can be able to manage the rain forecast, uh, more especially at our power station, Arnold, Camden, Majuba, Kusile, and Khrotfli. Um, those are the stations that we expect that they will be highly impacted by the, the coming rain over these coming weekends. But uh, the team, it's, it's ready and uh, mobilizing to make sure that we can deal with that. Thanks, Sikonati. Thank you, uh, Rulani. Colleagues, his name is uh, Rulani Matebula. He's a general manager in Generation. Uh, the first question comes from Antonit Slava of Report. What is the highest peak expected this winter? Antonit, I presume you mean uh, the demand peak expected this winter. Sakumoto, can I request you to handle that question? Or Lani? Uh, Rulani, please come back. We don't seem to... Oh, there you go. Sakumoto is on. Thank you. All right. No, thank you very much, uh, Sikonati, for that question. Uh, if you give me a few minutes, I'll get the precise number. Uh, I don't have it ready at hand. Uh, it's something that we have built into the modeling and the analysis, uh, but we'll get the response just now and maybe we can just even post it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sikonati. We'll come back to, uh, to, to the response then. The next question comes from Terence Krimer. Colleagues, I, 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 I wish to make this disclaimer right up front that uh, we will read all the questions that are posed on here. Uh, so we do have quite the usual suspects only asking questions and I, I don't see many other colleagues in the media asking their questions. Every question that has been posed will be read out and answered. Given that ESCOM has acknowledged its skills problem, is there any prospect of approaching the market for operations and maintenance bids at some of the smaller stations so that ESCOM could concentrate on its operations and maintenance resources at the larger power stations? Uh, then he says, or oh, alternatively, could IPPs be offered the chance to operate the smaller plants based on power purchase agreements aligned to the plant's decommissioning date? Andre Dorete, please, will you deal with that? Thanks, Terence. Um, yes, we, we are supplementing our own skills by insourcing contractors to look after maintenance of uh, some of our plants. We uh, intend to extend this in order to ensure that we can uh, free up more of our limited resources to look after um, units at our plants. The strategy is currently um, under development and being consulted on with uh, our partners in organized labor, so I don't want to elaborate on it too much, except to say that what we are looking at really is to bring in um, original equipment manufacturers to look at 
engineering and maintenance, not so much operations and maintenance. So there's a distinction, obviously, between those two. Uh, ESCOM would still be responsible for operating those power stations. Um, and uh, that's that's where the situation is at the moment with regard to augmenting our skills with or contractor capacity. Thanks. Thank you, Andre. The next question comes from William Hon at Network Firentwenta. With the 80 odd generation units in ESCOM's coal fleet, how many are currently offline? Rulani, can I ask you to confirm first the number of coal-fired generation units and, and whether you have that number uh, at hand? Thank you. How many are offline? Yes, uh, Sikonati, we have got uh, 79 uh, coal-fired generation units and uh, 18 of those are at this moment are forced off due to breakdowns and uh, eight of those are on uh, planned maintenance and that is excluding obviously Quebec uh, which will be the ninth unit. Thanks Sikonati. Before you go Rulani, can you elaborate a bit further on, on that number 18? There are units that, that have been off for a very long time that may or may not come back. Did you include them in the number 18, please? And if you can uh, say what those are, uh, please do. The, the only unit uh, that will be off for longer, it's uh, Medupi unit number four. I had not included it on the, on the 18th on the 18 that I've just uh, indicated. So the rest of the units uh, will be coming back uh, in within the next uh, seven days. I thank you, sir. I hope that is a sufficient response, uh, William. Faisal Patel of The Citizen says, I understand that you have made mention of six critical points government needs to take into consideration to avoid load shedding. Can you please repeat this, Andre Durita? Faisal, this has been extensively reported on, on uh, News24, so I would suggest that you just look that up, uh, then we can save everybody some time by not repeating uh, what's already been said. Thank you. Further to that, there is a recording that uh, that you have uh, of that meeting on Tuesday in which this was said. That would have been said in the first 10 minutes of the media briefing on Tuesday, uh, Faisal. Sakumoto, are you able to now answer the, the question from Antonin Slavet, please, before we move on to the next one? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Sikonati. Uh, the estimate uh, for end of May, which is when we expect uh, the highest peak, uh, is of the order of uh, 35,000. Uh, last year, we reached 35,000 megawatts, and uh, we expect more or less the same this coming winter. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sikonati. The next question comes from Shakira. Shakira, I probably going to mess up your surname if I try it, pronouncing it, do pardon me. Can you elaborate on what occurs during a generation failure or unit failure? What are the causes and why does this occur so frequently? Uh, Shakira, this question again has been answered in every statement that ESCOM has ever made and in every media briefing. There are so many issues that can occur at a power station and at a generation unit which would cause the unit to trip or to be switched off uh, in order for that repair to, to occur. Uh, but uh, Rulani, do you want to spend maybe a minute on that, on the response, please? On the, on the most probable or the highest rate of occurrences? Yeah. Um, yeah, as, as you indicated, Sikonati, there is multiple reasons. Um, why a unit would uh, or manually 
mainly to protect it from having catastrophic uh, failures. And uh, one, some of the failures that obviously uh, take us longer to, to, to return the units are our boiler tube leaks. As uh, you may know that we have got thousands of kilometers of tubes in each of our boilers. And uh, due to erosion uh, of uh, through the ash that passes through the boiler, uh, we at times develop leaks on those tubes. Um, and we have to go in and uh, do the repairs and, uh, and get out. So those are most of the uh, common causes that we have been communicating, I think, in the past. Uh, and but, but there are multiple reasons why each unit would uh, actually be, be forced off. And many a time it is to actually prevent uh, a catastrophic failure when we have uh, certain faults on on any of the units. Thank you, Rolani. That's sufficient a response. Caleb Kessem, this is your this is yours to tackle from Lungasi Melane. How much money has been spent on diesel so far? I'm going to uh, perhaps start by saying this current financial year started on the 1st of April. We are 21 days on it. Uh, uh, perhaps, Caleb, you can tell us what was spent in financial 2022 that ended on the 31st of March. Thank you. Um, thanks, thanks, Sekonati. Uh, I'll also check for this financial year, year, the 21 days. And if I recall for the last financial year, we as ESCOM have just been just under 7 billion on our own diesel plants. And in terms of the IPP plants, around 3.5 billion rand that we incurred in the last financial year. Thanks, Sekonati. Thanks. Thanks, Caleb. That's, that's uh, for between the year, the 1st of April 2021 and the 31st of March 2022, correct? That is correct. Thank you. Uh, colleagues, Caleb Kassem is the Chief Financial Officer of ESCOM. Graham Bell from Tech News wants to know what is the current load shedding forecast for next week? Uh, are we able to answer that question at this point, Andre? So the prognosis at the moment Graham, is that uh, we don't anticipate load shedding for next week. However, that is dependent on uh, the stability of our generation units, as we are now by all aware there are risks in the system that are difficult to forecast and predict. Um, depending on how we perform over the weekend, also depending on additional rainfall that uh, is forecast for the um, Mpumalanga area, where of course the majority of our coal plants are located, uh, we, we may potentially see uh, further impacts and that may have um, an impact on availability of generation capacity, particularly for uh, Monday next week. So Monday next week, the forecast is uh, likely to be tight, but after that, if we can uh, bring those units back that are currently planned to return to service and if we can get additional um, uh, a reduction in partial load losses then we should be okay. So we don't plan for load shedding next week but I have to emphasize that of course there is always a residual risk. Thank you Andre. The next question comes from Terence Kramer, Engineering News. Could you update us on progress regarding the National Transmission Company, South Africa? And that, that would be the unbundling, I, I guess. Can you confirm whether prospective board members have been interviewed and selected? If so, why haven't they been appointed? Have lenders offered their consent? And has NERSA indicated when the transmission license will be transferred to the National Transmission Company of South Africa? 
se jodó esto. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Sikonati. Uh, with regard to the transmission subsidiary company, yes, uh, the interviews have been con conducted by the ESCOM Holdings Board and uh, certain nominations have been forwarded to uh, the ministry uh, for consideration and approval. Um, that process is underway and uh, I'm sure in due course we'll get the, the results uh, from, from that process. Um, regarding the license, um, yes, we have made our submission and uh, we are now working through clarifications with NESA. Uh, at some point, NESA may require to conduct a, a public consultation process. Uh, we are not quite clear at this stage, uh, but uh, through these engagements, we hope to then get a firmer indication of the timelines uh, for, for the licensing. Uh, and then lastly, regarding the land engagement, um, the CFO is probably best positioned to deal with it. Uh, I know that the engagements have been ongoing, um, but I do not think we have concluded yet. Uh, but I would suggest that we uh, uh, give Kalib an opportunity to respond uh, to that specific question. Thank you. Kalib, please come in. Thank you. Th thanks, Terence. Yeah, Terence, we are still busy with that engagements on lender consents for transmission uh, separation. Thanks. Thank you, Caleb. Uh, colleagues, Sekhumito uh, Skipas is the head of the transmission division, which will be the national transmission company, South Africa. Akona Machoba of MoneyWeb wants to know how effective has how effective has the proactive maintenance been so far? And are any of these recently maintained units affected in this latest round of load shedding? Uh, Rulani, really the question is, have those units that have recently undergone maintenance been again uh, uh, affected or, or, or tripped during this round of load shedding? Thank you. Yeah, Sikunati, as I indicated, um, there are many reasons why a unit uh, would uh, be forced off or will, be, will trip off the grid. Uh, we have not seen a uh, lot, lot of failures on many of the units that we have recently brought back on the grid after um, long general overall outages. Um, However, it's still an area which requires a lot of focus on our side, but we are comfortable that uh, the maintenance that we are doing, it's really uh, yielding the results that we, we're looking for. Thank you, Rolani. Uh, William Horn of Network 24 asks again, for the purpose of making sense of breakdowns to our readers, could you explain whether breakdowns occur constantly or whether it is a case of coincidence that breakdowns happen to just synchronize at certain times, necessitating load shedding? Would a metaphor like indicator lights on cars, sometimes synchronizing at the traffic light, be a correct way of seeing this? William, with the respect, I will leave this question unanswered and move on to the next one. Uh, out of the 80 or 79 generation units, as Rani has just said again, breakdowns occur all the time amongst many of them and others, uh, other breakdowns take longer to fix, others much shorter. For example, the, the, uh, you, you have to leave a unit for about uh, a whole day before you could actually get in to work in in the boiler uh, because of the heat. So some of the breakdowns will take longer to fix and others much shorter and will be back online within reasonable time. The next question from Antonet Slabe has also been answered on, on the amount of money spent on diesel. Uh, Isabel Fick was answering that question. Isabel works for ESCOM uh, in, the, in, in the system operator. She was answering the question about the highest peak during the winter. I'll move on to Terence Kramer again. What authorizations are needed to bring in the original equipment manufacturers 
in to supplement engineering and maintaining skills at the power stations? What is the expected time frame for implementing this strategy? Andre, can you answer that, please? Sure, Siganati. Maybe let's just answer Antoinette's question. What we have spent um, for April so far, uh, 626 million rand uh, on diesel for the month of April so far. Um, that is about 48 and a half million litres of fuel that we have consumed at our open cycle gas turbines. Um, Terence, we um, are in the process of uh, working with um, our internal procurement systems in order to get the appropriate um, bids in place uh, to make sure that we can bring those OEMs on board. Obviously, as I've said, there are also consultations that have to take place with organized labor. Those consultations have commenced and those discussions are taking place. Um, where we are going to go to a, a single source, uh, there are certain PFMA requirements that we are also expected to obtain and uh, those will be met. So once all of these processes are complete, uh, we can then enter into a procurement process with the uh, OEMs and they can then start to deploy their uh, staff to those units. Uh, they will also need to have some time to ramp up. So um, if, if all goes well, I think within the next uh, three to six months, we should be able to see those boots on the ground of the OEMs doing the maintenance and engineering at some units on some power stations. So this is not a strategy that we're going to implement across the board, but only at those power stations that are uh, the significant contributors to unplanned uh, capacity losses. And uh, those are the power stations where the need for bringing in supplementary skills is the greatest. Thank you for that. Kyle of News 24 says, as compared over the past three years, they explained the challenges the professional setting needed. Is the shareholder, Mr. Gordon, and the ESCOM political task team headed by Deputy President Mabuza alive to these challenges and what ESCOM needs? Is there any progress in securing the backing of the government in terms of desperately needed policy changes? And Rita, please tell us if you are getting this support. Yes, we, we do engage regularly with our shareholder as well as with the political task team. Uh, we have uh, shared with uh, both the shareholder department as well as with the political task team uh, our perspectives. And uh, of course, we are not a policy maker, we are a policy implementer. And uh, once we've communicated that, um, it's really in the hands of the uh, various policy departments to, to implement those changes in the context of uh, a broader socio-economic and political environment, which we, of course, are not always privy to. So uh, that is where I think we should leave that particular question. Uh, if I can go straight on then to the next question, Sikonati, that Carl asked um, regarding National Treasury exemptions. Uh, this process is proceeding. We um, have a very positive precedent where uh, the Minister of Finance uh, has gazetted certain exemptions in favour of Transnet. We believe that uh, ESCOM obtaining uh, similar exemptions will be very useful to enable us to uh, accelerate some of our procurement processes. We're receiving good cooperation and support from our colleagues at Department of Public Enterprises as well as National Treasury. And we're also working closely with our colleagues at Transnet in order to uh, secure a similar exemption. We have not yet received it, but uh, I think we are making good progress towards that. 
Thanks, Sukhanati. He also uh, talks to uh, the policy makers. He says ESCOM is obviously trying its best to address the various challenges, especially inter area load uh, in related. However, has the ESCOM leadership given consideration in parallel to what will the future cry? ESCOM for crisis entail? Andre? Uh, Vali, yes, we do spend a lot of time debating the future of the uh, generation system, uh, bearing in mind, of course, that the uh, expected design life of the majority of our coal-fired power stations is rapidly approaching. We therefore cannot run these units in perpetuity. We need to, at some stage, uh, replace them. Uh, clearly, Madupi and Kusile play an important uh, role in partially answering that question. But the major uh, shift that we are seeing in the electricity supply industry is related to the unbundling of ESCOM and in particular the establishment of the independent transmission system and market operator, the, the ITSMO, which is the current transmission business that uh, Sigamotso leads that business. Um, earlier referred to, and this will enable more private sector investment to replace the capacity that ESCOM will retire either because the plants have reached the end of their lives or because they've become too expensive to operate or because their emissions uh, are too great and uh, have a negative impact on the environment and those emissions will cost too much to abate. Uh, we have previously indicated that we intend to retire about uh, 11 gigawatts of coal-fired capacity by 2035. Uh, after that, we will have six coal-fired power stations operating, uh, so our fleet will be considerably reduced, and therefore we do need additional generation capacity to be built. Uh, ESCOM itself does not expect to play a dominant role in this. We simply don't have the balance sheet to build more plants, uh, nor uh, do I think that uh, building large generation plants is necessarily a, a core competence of ESCOM. And we therefore wish to, through our restructuring, enable private investors to invest in new generation capacity with confidence uh, bearing in mind that uh, they would like to understand uh, some degree of certainty on their returns, uh, bearing in mind that these are very large investments that they are required to make. And uh, there is therefore, I think, a very clear policy direction set out in the roadmap uh, to a restructured electricity supply industry in South Africa that was published by the Department of Public Enterprises in November of 2019. And that really sets out in quite a bit of detail exactly how the unbundling of ESCOM uh, is intended to uh, allow the country to still meet the requirements of the electricity market, while at the same time taking cognizance of the fact that the, the ESCOM fleet, bearing in mind its average age of about 42 years, how that uh, fleet is now in many instances, reaching the end of its design life. Thanks, Valia. I hope I've answered your question. Thank you, Andre. That is the uh, where the last question we have. Uh, we we are now at the question. Boniswa of Isolezwe says people have been complaining that ESCOM spends too much money on diesel. Could you tell us why it is important for ESCOM to always have diesel and what could happen if to our power system if there was no diesel? Uh, Boniswa, the diesel is banned uh, in order to the lights. Uh, I'm sure we will all agree to the whole economy. 
Andre, can I ask you to make closing remarks if you are willing to uh, make a, a reference to this last question as well? Thank you so much. Thank you, Siganati. I think your, your signal is quite poor, uh, so maybe Boniswa didn't get uh, your response to that question. First of all, Boniswa, I agree that we uh, burn too much diesel. Uh, we, we don't like spending money on diesel, but the open cycle gas turbines play a very important role in reducing the peak demand, uh, particularly during evening peaks. And that it, this is what the plants were designed for. This is why they are there. And we have in the past been using them quite successfully. So these plants are uh, very well maintained. Uh, we make sure that we always have adequate diesel stocks available at these facilities. And that's why when I give my update at the start of these briefings, I always refer to the diesel uh, tank levels. Uh, this is very important. And this is something that we monitor very closely. It's uh, measured on an hourly basis and we, we monitor the arrival of trucks, particularly at Ankerlich. And um, we, we therefore do everything in our power to not run out of that reserve capacity, uh, which is really a, a, uh, a battery, if you will, to provide against uh, the sudden loss of generation units, bearing in mind that we have an unreliable and unpredictable system. Um, ladies and gentlemen, just in conclusion, uh, we, we are emerging from load shedding. Uh, I want to thank my colleagues and generation for putting in an extraordinary effort to manage the number of trips that they've had, bringing units back, uh, meeting their commitments. This is very important and uh, it's, it's taken a lot of hard work and dedication. Uh, I can assure you that the teams are very focused and are working very hard. Uh, I also want to uh, remind every South African, please, to use electricity sparingly, particularly during peak hours from about uh, 5 o'clock in the afternoon till about uh, 7.30 to 8 o'clock in the evening. That's when we have our highest demand on the system. And again, your cooperation to managing demand as best you can by switching off any unnecessary appliances is very much appreciated. And we... I uh, look forward to your, to your continued uh, understanding and support during this very challenging time for ESCOM and uh, the electricity grid in general. Thank you, Sikonati. Uh, we are adjourned.